So if you're in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we're going to look at this word dunamis. Jesus had been resurrected and had walked among his disciples for 40 days. And he was getting ready to go back to heaven. And he told them in verse 4, he said, I want you to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The Holy Spirit, that's right. See, Jesus never intended for us to fulfill the Great Commission without the power, without the fire, without the revelation, without the love of God being shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Come on, he never intended for us to go out and touch the world and change the world without the endowment of power from on high with the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. How many churches are out there today trying to do that? With a form but no power. See, God's bringing us back to Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. And he said, verse 8, And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You'll be my witnesses in Peoria, in Phoenix, in Maricopa, in Arizona, in the United States of America, and the uttermost parts of the earth. An empowerment from on high. He said, you shall receive power. You shall, in the Greek, lambano dunamis. Say it with me, lambano dunamis. You're going to receive a dynamo that lives inside of you that produces power, that produces strength, that produces miracles. You're going to receive lambano dunamis. Now, let me just say this. This word lambano, receive in the Greek, does not look like this. Kumbaya, my Lord. Now, there's a time for the presence that's a sweet presence. That is not the word lambano. Lambano does not. I'm waiting. No, no, no. Lambano means to seize, to aggressively go after and pursue. It means to possess and make it your own. Lombano looks like this. Ah. Come on, some of you need to just reach up. Ah. 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 Come on, we gotta learn how to Lombano dunamis. We gotta learn how to stir up the gift of God. We gotta learn how to be aggressive in the spirit. This church gets that. Thank God for your leaders. Give them a hand. Amen. They've taught you. There is another word for receive, and it means to love, to embrace, to be filled. It looks like this. I love those times with the Lord. But when we come together, there's a mission. There's an assignment. There's a mandate. All this jumping around down here, it's not just to make noise. It's not just to, to burn off calories. Come on, it's to accomplish an assignment. It's to accomplish a mission. Mission-minded church. God's looking for a mission-minded church who understands your assignment, who understands your mandate, who understands what God's called you to do, and who also gets the fact that you're not going to do it because you have some brilliant plan. But you're going to do it by the pure power of the Holy Ghost. Now, let me just say this. The same way that they know how to bring lambano dunamis here in this corporate time, you can do the same thing in your business, in your family, in your workplace. You can lambano dunamis. You can pull down the power of God. And so dynamo 
in the year of the dynamo, this dunamis power, in the decade of the mouth, in the decade of the voice, because you understand we're in a voice war. The enemy's very, very aggressive about filling the atmosphere with his narrative. We're living in an unprecedented time in this nation of cancel culture. Why? There's an assignment against the voice. We took, spoke about Jezebel last night, but there's an assignment against the voice. And that's why God says, I want to fill your voice with dunamis power that is a generator that generates supernatural breakthrough, supernatural anointing, and a supernatural force that begins to shatter the forces of darkness. Listen, my 87-year-old father, he's 88 now, but last year, 87 years old, he got thrown in Facebook jail. He's like, Jane, I'm in Facebook jail. Can you get me out? I'm like, Dad, I don't, I don't, I don't think I can. Sorry. <laughs> there's a voice war. And there's a narrative. I don't want to get political, but I just want to say this. January the 4th last year, before January 6th, we were in a time of deep intercession for our nation. And I had this little prophetic word, and the Lord said this, I'm up to something. And I knew when he said it, I wasn't going to like the way things were turning out, but I knew he would say, you're going to have to trust me because I'm up to something. Come on, there's a voice war. But I want you to understand, inside of you, God has put a power generator. And the only way that generator gets activated is for you to open your mouth. Do you realize that you can, have, you can have a car sitting out in the parking lot that has, what, 400 horsepower? Is that too much? <laughs> I don't know cars. Does anybody here have a 400 horsepower car? Is that too much? Okay. Oh, that guy over there, he's got a four. Okay, so I'm on good ground, okay? I mean, it'll roar, right? It'll roar. But you realize that it just sits there with those 400 horsepower until that man puts a key in the ignition and cranks the ignition and turns it on. So you can have all this Holy Ghost horsepower on the inside of you. But the way that you've got to engage it is you've got to start opening up your mouth. Your mouth is the ignition. Your mouth is that which starts the engine that begins to generate power, that begins to cause those horsepower to begin to be released so that power can be generated out of this, in, this inert place into a place of action and activity and supernatural release. And there's a lot of people in the church that have been filled with the Holy Ghost and they're doing absolutely nothing with it.